Hello, uh, my name is uh, Brant. The day is the uh, 16th day of May 2020. And after thinking for a while, I've decided to um, share with you this particular book. This book was written back in 2008. It is called, the uh, writer was called The Informer. He never ever gave his name. He's no longer living. And the name of the book is The Constitution for the United States, The Myth and the Reality. Just who owns the United States? Now, let me just say this. When you're referring to the United States, you're referring to a corporation. When you refer to America, you're referring to a country. The United States is not a country. It's a corporation. America is a country, but not the verse around. Think about that. So I want to give credit to the informer. How I found out about this, I guess, is by accident. I remember sharing this with a group of people who were supposedly conservatives back in 2014 at a meeting with probably 15 to 20 people. And they basically scoffed at me. You see. Because they've been programmed. They've been... The propaganda worked. So they believed in the Constitution. That's where they get their freedoms from. You don't get your freedoms from a Constitution. You don't get your freedoms from a piece of paper. I'm... Um, it is third party. You didn't. Uh, it is a contract. Repeat. You did not sign it. You have no part in it. It was done, not in the public. It was actually done in privacy. It was a form of a coup that took place in the United States. Your framers are not great people. When are you going to figure it out? You've been con with the Constitution. So I'm going to read uh, the forward here. And then I'm going to read the first chapter. I would encourage you to buy this book. The book is basically a little over 100 pages. I bought it in 2014. Yes. It costs around $35 and plus shipping. But I know more in this than I ever knew when I took political science classes in college. Do you understand? Forward. Please remember the fraud is being exposed in this book as to what the United States really is. Myths abound on the conception of this country's government, and this is what this book exposes. Always remember that the country was owned by the king, the pope, and the crown. The British Empire consisted of 13 plantations in America called colonies. You do understand what a colony is. Like in Africa when the British, Germans, French and others colonized parts of Africa. Most were born, all the first presidents were born on the British soil and were British subjects. Most were born before 1774 and could never meet the requirements written into the Constitution in 1787. No subject born on soil foreign to the land that was called United States could ever hold the office. This is all in the Constitution. Okay. If this is a, if this is a law of the land, this this let's just look at it. Okay. Let's just get to reality. Many many people believe Washington and other presidents were born on United States soil. This is not the case in the United of the United States has not yet been formed or led by fraud and myth and kept in ignorance purposely. Therefore, your core beliefs of this government is founded on pure myths and fraud. 
This book will try to impart the real truth as to the questions who, what is the entity called the United States that seems to control every aspect of your life from birth to death and beyond, and the facts we have never had at government despite what you have been taught or think in your mind that you created. You have been ruled by a RICO, R-I-C-O, establishment of foreign powers for the last 221 years. The Black Pope is responsible for this. Now chapter one. This is not a book full of conspiracy theories. It is simply put a book of historical facts that have been selected in context that will defile any defy any attempt to dismiss it with the disparity use of the word conspiracy theory. It is a fact conspiracy minus theory. In 1828, the Webster Dictionary defines conspiracy as a combination of men for an evil purpose or agreement between two or more people to commit some crime in concert or a plot. Theory is defined in the same dictionary as meaning speculation. The facts will show that there is indeed a conspiracy and that it is most definitely not a wild eye theory from the forming mouth of a lunatic. The appeal of this book is in the reasonable faculties of those that read it by furnishing the facts as folly for better understanding the current state of affairs in this country. Quote, this is from Thomas Paine, The Rights of Man. Reason and ignorance, the opposite of each other. Duality. They influence the great bulk among mankind. If either of these can be rendered sufficiently extensive in a country, the machinery of government does the machinery of government goes easily on. It does. Reason obeys itself, and ignorance submits to whatever it dictates it is. From the rights of man, Thomas Paine. Ignorance is a state of not knowing. When reason is present, but the knowledge is lacking, the term frequently refers to nothing other than that lack of knowledge. This lack of knowledge can be corrected, and you need to know the truth. It is the willfully ignorant mind, one that is perfectly closed and accepting of knowledge and undermines his view of the world that will have a very difficult time accepting the simple facts presented in this book. Yeah, they will. They sure will. Such resistance to the truth has resulted in the international, in, I'm not international, the intentional spreading of the term conspiracy theory to include many sets of facts that undermine the current political and social infrastructure. Propaganda's most evil goal is to promote slogans and their accompanying ideas to the point where faith and belongings are more important than facts and principal arguments. Bringing down these fortified castles built upon the sands of contradictory and factual unsupported belief system is the goal of this book. If you were taught that Santa existed after, say, five years old and this continued till you were a dead bed when you were in your death's bed, you will not believe someone that said Santa did not exist. This is what happened to the American people concerning this government and the way we live today. There happens to be a mind process called cognitive distances. This is where someone tells you a truth and truth that contradicts a lie taught all your life. Like the Santa Claus lie I mentioned above, that the mind rejects the truth. This is called a core belief that everyone has. It's the core belief that had to be eliminated in order to accept the truth. Here's an example of what I mean. I believed in Santa until I was seven years old because my mother and father would not lie to me, would they? I refused to believe in my playmates. They were told the truth at maybe five. No, can't be, said I, because the ones I just keep kept telling me Santa was coming tonight and set up a tree and bring presents. Oh, I like presents, so it had to be the proof extrapolated that over to what government promises you today. So when finally mom and dad told me the truth, I had a hard time accepting that there was no Santa Claus. I would not leave me, I would, it would not leave me for another two years. I just had that hope they were hide, lying. That's why I opened with what I did about ignorance in your mind, said that you can't help but to believe a lie taught all your life. This book probably will be the last I will write to prove our Santa Claus, to prove your Santa, to prove 
your sanity does not exist the way it was taught you by people you trust. So let's start to try to eliminate the cognitive dissonance. In case you are wondering what it is, read this. And it goes on here with the theory of cognitive dissonance by Leon Festinger. I can't pronounce it, I'll just spell it. F-E-S-T-I-N-G-E-R, Stanford University Press in 1957. The definition holds that the mind involuntarily rejects information not in line with previous thoughts or actions. As he observed, a person can deal with the pressure generated by changing the distance, the old behavior to harmonize with information. But if the person is committed to the old behavior and way of thinking, he simply rejects the new information. A simple, I don't believe it, follow word is the easy cop out. Or if you are unaware, you are unaware of being unaware. To make you aware of whom the players are in this expose of the myths and fraud upon the Americans are these three entities that rule the world today. We start with the Pope. This man of mortal failings, like all of us, have called himself the Vicar of Christ. No one else but the original Pope called himself this and created a church called the Catholic Church. Catholic means universal, that's all. This mere mortal then sets up a group of like-minded people at the Vatican. After all, there are three city-states. This is not in the book. The Vatican, the city of London, and Washington, D.C. They're city-states. Their laws, what they do, are not compiled, cannot be handled, cannot be dealt with, with the laws outside. In other words, they cannot be charged for crookedness or criminals. They live in a state that protects them, basically. Uh, here we go. It began a corporation, a government, if you will, of the church. Webster, in his 20, 1828 dictionary, called the Pope a sham, as no one was ever given the, that character by the Lord. He was a man, as no one... He was a man that could read and took it upon himself to declare his vicar status so he could rule over men under the guise of the church. From this universal church, you had people that called themselves Protestants, Baptists, Mormons, etc., etc., because they had disagreements with the Pope. In the history of the Popes, it was the Popes that caused the first income tax to be laid on the people of the Vatican, so the Pope was the first man to lay income tax on people. Did not know that. This is where the first income tax on Americans came from, as those in power, mimicking, mimicking the Pope's tax. Popes, either white or black, and that's not race, were not, were not who they professed to be, as many were statistics, sat, 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 satis, and did many deviant things that the Lord said man should not do. I will say this is coming from a Christian viewpoint perspective. Um, this particular gentleman was a Christian, as far as I can tell. Like when the popes used the Jewish people to apply, apply usury in their money dealings, and after the people did that, the popes had them killed. This is well documented by Dr. Emmanuel Josephson in his books that I have referred to in my other books. Emmanuel Josephson is a brilliant writer. He wrote uh, about Roosevelt. He wrote about, that is Franklin Della Rosa. He wrote about uh, the Rockefellers. He also wrote about the medicine the con is done with that, with the uh, medical establishment in this country. His books are well worth reading. So popes are human and fail like we do, and they do not deserve the title of the Vicar of Christ. Next we have the king of the nations of the world. They all claim they have divine rights over men, meaning that God has given them the right to command people what to do. Sort of a mini-pope who had control of all the churches. But in this book, we are taking talk. We are talking about the King of England. Sometimes this reign of kings and queens were called the Queen or called the Crown. In 1600, King James took the Geneva Bible and created his own version called the King James Version. That is reality. Simply, the Geneva Bible is older than the King James Bible. The Geneva Bible was written in Geneva, Switzerland. In doing so, he took all the side notes out of the Geneva Bible that explained this passage. At that time, people could not read very well, and, and the king did this to cover the fact he was a known homosexual and other deeds that he didn't want the subjects of his known. 
Now let's tie these two together back in 1213 so you can see how this affects America and you today. The king was excommunicated from the church prior to 1213 for reasons I will not go into. Excommunication means that your soul cannot go to heaven when you die. Again, another belief system. That the story of the Pope had to command they follow to the Vatican are church rulers. So the Pope played it for all it's worth and told the king that the Pope was install the king in good stead and his soul would go to heaven. But the catch was that the king had to give up his worldly possessions, possessions and all his subjects, that is his people, to the Pope in 1213. The king agreed and then became a vassal of the Pope forever, and the king British Empire was totally owned by the Pope. Anything to note is a British Empire anywhere in the world was now owned by the Pope, but the king could still pretend to rule the British Empire. Next, we have the crown. The crown, the crown which I will call, is the crown bank throughout the book. This consists of the international bankers and the time of their time, and they can be found partially listed at the end of the book. The, the, uh, the bank that was in London was part and partial handed over to the Pope in 1213. Much like today, and takeover of one bank by another bank, remember, as this is very important in understanding the book, the Pope and the King still battle each other as the Pope property was in a way controlled by the King. Look at it this way, the King was a tenant on his property that once was his. But the Pope could not run everything as the king could, so he sat back in Rome and pulled the strings. Sort of like General Motors does to each division of cars like Chevrolet, Buick, and etc. When the king refused to accept Stephen's Langan as the Archbishop of Canterbury by Pope Innocent III in 1208, that's what caused the king to be excommunicated. Whether he realized it or not, he tried to deny his agreement with the Pope in 1213. But the bankers, the Crown Bank, fronted the money to both the Pope and the King. So now we have both parties owing to the Crown Bankers their debt. Pope Innocent the White Pope rejected the Magna Carta in his papal bulls. From Joseph's book, I quote, The Pope incited strife by using what few teachings of Christ he followed, such as the St. Levi, Saint Levi alias Matthew as Mark 2.14, Luke, many different other scriptures. I won't go into that. Nothing more clearly reveals the antithesis of government and religion than these facts. Are you still with me in the banks? Bankers are still sitting back taking this all in. That's why I interject into here. The crown could care less their squabbles. Both owed, owned the crown bank money and like the banks of the day could foreclose on them anytime they wanted. Sound familiar as to what is happening today? Did the common man have anything to say? in those days as to what government was doing to him or them. Keep this in mind as to who the players are as you read the book. Do not get confused as to what crown I'm referring. Do not rely on history books to explain the two crowns. Remember, Columbus was Italian and came from Italy. Where is Pope located? You know, in Italy. Who fronted the money for his voyage? The Queen of Spain. But this is history you are taught. The real facts of the Italian explorer, Giovanni Cabato, Cabato, C A B O T A T O, who sailed for England for King Henry the Seventh, became known to anglicize his name to John Cabot. Cabot arrived in 1497 and claimed North America with the English sovereign while Columbus was still searching the Indies in the Caribbean. As you see, the English sovereign refers to the King of England that already gave his total empire to the Pope. In other words, both King and Pope owed their soul to the Crown bankers. So who owns what you call the United States? Who really fronts the money to find America? This book will show that all three own the United States and how they did it, that you will never find printed in standard history books. Remember that over the centuries, the only one of these three, three that changed is the international bankers. They just have different names. Then the old Froggers, Knights Templar, Gisslers, Tuscans, and others. You have the Federal Reserve of the of the, SX, the Bank of England, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, etc., etc. All now owned and controlled by the Black Pope Vatican. So that's chapter one.
uh, what they, he's stating here, the informer. Um, I think I have the information here. Let me check real quick here. Yes, here it is. Uh, if you're interested in his books, um, this is what I recommend. This is uh, their address. It just simply says A bar C. That means a capital A, B, A, R, capital C. The address is 7055 Mountain Road, and that's located in Oxford, North Carolina. Um, and ask them for lists. Or you can go online and basically um, do a search that is books by the informer and it will pull it up and it will give you the address also. Um, he wrote 15 books, that is. Um, so I, I thought I'd share that with you. Um, and so you can look into that if you have, if you want to know more things, just contact me through um, Facebook and I'll give you more details. Okay. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.